Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Samonix channel. Today, we're going to be building the high grade Gundam The Origin, the Saku Cannon test type. So, you might find this very similar to the P Bandai that came out last year, which is the Ian Graydon version of the Saku Cannon. So, they do have some similarity because I think they have a pretty similar look. If I if I have this information wrong, please tell me in the comments. So, um, basically that Ian Graydon version, which is the green version, um, is basically from this model right here. So this is, this came out at 2017, which is around three years ago. Yes. So this time, this is the test type. So I didn't really build the Saku Cannon all kind of, no matter it's the variation or the regular release, I haven't built any one of them. So it's really hard for me to tell you what's the difference. Anyway, let's not talk too much. Let's just open up the box first. Let's start to look at the instruction menu. So this time when we're looking at the runners, mainly focus on A1, A2, E1, and F runner will be those, and also some part of B1 as well will be the leftover parts. So just taking a brief look at it, I think that a lot of parts is gonna get left out. Mm, should I say I'm happy about it? I'm not really sure. So let's just quickly flick through the instruction menu, looking at the instruction right here. It's, it's a pretty simple MS as, I, as, I'm, as I'm seeing right now. It's a pretty simple MS. Well, the decals, wow, that's a lot of decals. That is really a lot of decals. So there's two type of head right here and then we also have a color guide down below so let's look at the runners first e1 runner one of the runner that mentioned in the instruction menu that's gonna have a lot of level for power so we're just gonna take a brief look at it so this is obviously the feet part legs part legs part legs part uh, part of the legs and then legs part arms part and shoulders right here a2 runner so well actually this is the a1 and a2 runner they are attached together so when we saw in the instruction menu, there's a lot of part that got left out. So just take a brief look about what's on this. So this is the big shield, which is not going to be used. This is Zaku head. This is the handpiece armor, the side skirt, front skirt, back skirt, all over here. And the torso part as well. This is part of the arms. A B1 runner features the feet, torso, feet part, uh, the mono eye, and also some part of this is part of the forearm and this is the kneecap a d2 runner which features a lot of inner frame for the legs mainly for the legs j runner the tube on the waist and the tube on the head as well a d1 runner mainly focus on the legs part right over here and this side right here we can see some backpack and some part of the waist part as well the f runner all kind of hands option oh and this part of the torso as well and then thrusters and heat hawk right here. G runner, this is a new runner for the MS. We can see this is the, possibly this is the legs part. This is the, um, the joint for the legs and the new head. We can see shield, we can see, uh, I think this is the torso and the spike shoulders and other parts. I, I'm not really sure about the other parts. Last runner, the eye runner. This is the backpack, hands option. And then we have the cannon and then the uh, double machine cannon at the waist there. That's basically all the runners. And of course, last we have poly caps and also the decals, which is a lot. It seems a lot. And it seems like they are pretty large decal as well. So. I'm starting to get a little worried about the the stability of the decals. But anyway, uh, we finished everything, so let's jump into the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Zaku Cannon test type. So this is the finishing of it. As you know, most of the Zaku from the Origin series, they use the same frame and the same parts. So this time, um, I will just compare with the Zaku Half Cannon. For those of you that don't know, this test type is actually the... Uh, prototype for the Saku half cannon. So I will just use it to compare with him. And since I don't own one of the Saku half cannons, so I just did a little research and then just look at the appearance of both. And I found that actually most of the parts of this premium band I changes on the, is focusing on the upper body. Other than that, that's not much, really much to change. Uh, it is a pretty solid kit. I gotta say that pretty sad that it, this is P Van Dive Plus. Um, 
Now you have another version to choose, which is the gray version. Uh, I'm not, I mean, it, not, not the gray version, the green version of this Saku Cannon. So it will be Ian Graydon version. You can choose to buy that or not because they are basically, they are literally the same. So just, you know, you have some color variants that you can choose. But anyway, that's not really the point. As I said, this gauntlet is pretty solid. And if I, if I, if I have to say something that is, if you have a chance, then you can buy this one. But this Saku also contains one of the problem from the origin Saku is the legs is most of the articulation is pretty limited because of how the Saku is structured, uh, which I will mention later. At the beginning of the video, I just want to briefly go through what type of part is left. So first, uh, if we look at the B1 runner, is this is the uh, the arms, the forearm part, the mono eye, and the chest part is got left out. And then for the E1 part right here, since the since part of the legs is new, so of course there's gonna be some leftover leg part as well. And for the A1 runner, is actually the most part left out. So we can see that the torso part is left out, waist part is left out, the shield is completely down. And then the Saku head is completely different because this time the Saku cannon test type is using the Saku one's head. So this time it's different. And we also can see some forearm, uh, forearm pieces right here is left out as well. So most of the parts is still remained and uh, it didn't really waste too much parts. As usual, we're gonna start with the head. So this time this head, as I mentioned, it is using the Saku one's head. So lift up, lift down. It's pretty good. Uh, moving 360 as well is pretty nice. Uh, for the antenna right here, you have two options. You can use this kind of normal mode antenna or using this rapid type antenna. But you have to choose it when you assemble it because once you assemble the antenna on it, it's literally impossible to pull it out again. It's extremely tight. Even if you can pull it out, I think you will just damage the parts. So um, you choose which one do you want before you um, before you assemble all the pieces together. The mono eye is movable as well, just like all the other Saku series. Uh, there's a little there's a little hidden joint right here down here for you to move the mono eye. So it's just this same thing like most of the origin Saku. It's not really that special anymore. Now let's look at the torso right here. So first this torso is basically new, which is pretty good. And for the movement right here, it is pretty free as well. You can move 360, really no limit right here. But uh, I gotta say that there's something surprising is there's a, it features a cockpit right here, which you have to, you know, pull out a bit. So once you pull it out, you can see some cockpit details inside there. So I will just use a torch for you to look at. So you can look at, there's a piloting seat. There's a pilot seat right in there. Uh, which you can't really see. It's really hard to show it to you on the camera because it's it's not really that uh, visible. But I think that this kind of small detail really upgraded the whole Gampa. It's sort of like bringing you small surprises. Now, looking at the arms of the Saku Cannon Test Type, so first 360, it's pretty normal. Lift up, not really. This side as this side as well is not really can lift up because they both have some big pieces of armor getting in the way. Bending is pretty good, and then you know rotate around still feature the same thing. Uh, the shield here have a ball joint which allow you to move the shield. Uh, the spike shoulder here can lift up slightly a bit, so not really much articulation. The whole arm can move to the front, so and move to the back for a bit as well. So overall, the arms articulation is pretty free. Looking at the waist part right here, so most of the waist part contain the same except for the front skirt right here, which is brand new. Uh, I gotta say that this time for Bandai is your decal finally stick on the waist. Oh my God, finally the decals will not just fall off and then keep popping out. It's really giving me OCD for the gym series where it have like basically every sticker flipping out. So this time, uh, I want to say something about a sticker because the Heat Hawk is supposed to stay, supposed to be uh, on this side, store on this side, but it will constantly kind of like rubbing on the stickers, which will cause something like this, which, is, which will kind of making your stickers starting to lose color. So my recommendation is don't store the Heat Hawk um, too much or don't just you know keep rubbing on the servers otherwise you will damage the stickers 
And other than that, there's not much to talk about. The movement is literally the same, just like all type of Saku. So the front scare is liftable, the side scare can lift a bit because the tube is getting in the way, so it can't really lift. So the kicking to the front is pretty good, kicking to the back, kicking to the side. And then we have you have an initial joint right here for you to fix the position of the legs as well. Uh, the bending though is you know it's not really that impressive because the this tube right here limited the movement of the saku's legs so it's not going to be very great and down here on the feet is a big ball joint so that's not that's not really anything surprising i think it's time for me to talk about the backpack of the saku so this backpack is literally the same like the one on the saku half cannon except maybe like this piece right here which is extra so first the 180 millimeter cannon is still movable um it can move a bit for this two big gun right here it can move side to side it's basically pretty free as well that movement to use it is actually pretty simple just rotate it to the front and let the let the hand hold on it and then that's how you use it it's pretty simple that's not much to talk about other than that there's not much special on this backpack talking about the accessories so first we have a trigger hand with no hand armor on it so this hand is specially for you to just rip off the machine gun from other saku for your saku cannon test type to hold it uh unfortunately i don't want to rip it off because i'm i'm that lazy and i don't want to you know scroll through the whole pile of gompers just to get one machine gun out so i decided to not do it and other than that we have the open hands right here and we also have a piece right here this looks really similar to those rg uh, action base adapter so it's just the same way that how you use it other than that we have the heat hog uh, provided two of them one of them is for you to store on the side skirt which you have to which you have to be careful because uh once you rub on it a little more on the side skirt it will damage the decals as i just said and one for you to hand and one for you to hold on the hand for you to do some action and that's basically the accessory there's not much to talk about all right this is the end of the saku cannon test type video thank you guys for watching be sure you drop a like on my videos and subscribe to my channel make sure you hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video uh my rate to this gampa is um since i built a lot of sakus i can't really you know bring you that kind of excitement say whoa i built a saku i can't really give you that kind of excitement because i built too much saku and it's kind of starting to lose a bit interest but for me if you have the love for saku just buy it if you don't you can skip this that's basically how it works but that's basically how it goes uh other than that i would just say that it is a pretty solid kit so yeah it's but you know right now you have another option where the green version if you prefer that version you can buy that as well you can always buy the mg as well since for i believe that for mgs saku cannon is a regular release so you don't have to throw a bunch of money just to get a small scale saku cannon um the judge call is on you so uh thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye